What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. We just got off the live stream here. It's been a while since I uploaded a video, so I thought I'd do something different and, and go live for like 30 minutes. So now we're 30 minutes behind on what we should have been doing. So originally my plan was to take the car out with the tracks and the snow and make an awesome video and have some fun. Unfortunately, Canada decide, no, the last couple of days we're gonna be mild and there's no snow left on the ground. So I was hoping that there was gonna be like eight to 10 centimeters cause I'm metric like that, but it, there's not. So we're gonna work on our boost control issue. I did buy, if we can find it, cause I think it went flying somewhere. I honestly don't know where it went. I did buy a boost controller. Oh wait, we started the car, so it probably went flying. I lost it. One second, I gotta find it. Oh, maybe I put it back in the box. We bought a manual boost controller, and we have this distribution block here, so we're gonna utilize this, and we're gonna utilize this, and we're gonna make... There's two ways I could've did this, and I'm glad you guys brought this up um, by DMing me. Um, I could've added a spring from here to here on the flapper to help pull this shut, and it would actually add to the spring that's in this. So if we can't get this to work, we'll add a helper spring from here to here. That will help increase boost. We'll have to put one on every one. Or we add our manual boost controller and it gives us enough boost. So we're gonna try this first. Now, a lot of people probably don't know how to manual boost controller works. Essentially, all it is is a spring and a ball inside of it. I don't know if the, oh, yep, there's the ball. Don't lose that. So all it is, is a spring and a ball. So essentially this becomes your new wastegate because you have to overcome the spring pressure in the ball inside of this port in order to get any pressure out of this port to go push open those wastegates. Now, most manual boost controllers will have a small little hole. You can't see it on here, but a small little hole to create a small little boost leak in the boost controller. And that's just so once air passes through here, bypasses the spring and pushes on the wastegate, air can actually escape back out. If not, it would get stuck on the top side of this ball. Just to keep that in mind so you know which port goes where. And I bought the setup on Amazon. It was like $30. It came with a couple different springs. So if our pressure doesn't work, we could try a different spring. For testing purposes, we bought ourselves a small gauge. This one goes to 30 PSI. And we're just gonna tee this off between our boost controller and our wastegate to see how much pressure it takes to uh, open up that wastegate. All right, this is gonna be our quick little test here. You can see the gauge is right here. The wastegate flapper is there. Well, it didn't open yet, and that was 14 PSI, what the heck? Probably undo it all the way at first, I guess. Okay, so we got 6 PSI. We'll go a couple turns. So if you guys, if you guys remember before we were hitting about five PSI in one video and it started opening. So now, that's about seven, that's about 10. You can see it's fully open by like five PSI on this one. This is essentially what our setup's gonna be like. I don't have the right fittings for the ends here. I didn't realize that these were bigger, so um, we'll get the proper plugs later. We have our hoses going to each one. I don't think length is gonna to matter too much because it's pressure. Pressure is just equal across everything. That's the reason that this turbo doesn't make three pounds, this one makes three pounds, this, this, and then it equals 12 down here. Now that's not how it works. They all make 12 pounds and uh, Pressure is equal among the whole thing. Um, and then we just have this tied in. Uh, this is excessively big and not the length we'll be using and that's not mounted, but this is essentially where it's gonna be. We're just gonna see if it works in perfect harmony. The goal here is that all the actuators will open because we don't wanna spin one turbo way too much. 
around 12 pounds when they start opening. Works for me, man. So we just gotta button that up now and we can do some wappity wappity tappity tappity tests. But it's dark outside right now, so we gotta wait till tomorrow. In typical Canada fashion, I'm like, yeah, we'll test it on the streets tomorrow. It'll be all fine. Wake up tomorrow. <laughs> it snowed, what the heck? There it is, that's our boost control setup. This is all um, sealed off, it's mounted, this is mounted. We're running just from this turbo and then we plugged off all the other ones with some bolts. I didn't take into account exhaust back pressure, so there's that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump inside the car now, I'm gonna play with the Honda and see if we can get this thing to two-step now because it's been a while. And then after that, I'm gonna see if I can get me a helper so we can go film it outside in the snow. Cause yeah. Like I said, it did snow. Except the downside is the helper has to be outside in minus 10 degrees, so. So I can get the rev limiter to work on the anti-lag, but I can't get the ignition timing retard to work, so. When I'm looking at the screen, it's still saying minus, I mean, 24 degrees of timing at two pounds of boost. So I'm not the way, I'm not sure this is the way Honda reads it, but right here you can see our ignition value is just flatlined at 24. And um, yeah, I'm not sure why. So in our um, table here, set to minus 34 so I don't know because I kept trying to minus it so I don't want to kill myself with all the fumes in here but so I think I figured it out uh, my activation rpm and my <laughs> so my activation rpm and my rpm limit were they actually the same in the program which was doesn't make sense to me that's why I changed it and now we can get it to do it but I'm in a residential area and I'm uh, kind of worried because I tested it like seven times now. So it's needless, it's needless to say we have one pissed off little Honda. I'm glad I figured that out. It's just common sense. It's not using the software enough to understand it in my head. And then I looked at it and I'm like, oh yeah, well that makes sense why that didn't work. Um, it did make 10 pounds of boost on the, the two step. So we're gonna just turn that up a little bit there. Probably try it one more time. Now that we got it, I just want to give it like 20 minutes so my neighbors are like, that fucking idiot, he's just out there two-stepping all day. Well, there's our test. It says down here we made 7.4 pounds of boost at, I think it was 6,400 RPMs that we had it set at, 6,500 RPMs. So I could also make that more. This is the settings that we used here. I'll uh, get those up. So I could definitely make this more and uh, probably get some more crackles and bangs out of it. We'll save that for another day. I think our poor little motor hates us now. Um, I do want to get it. I do want to go out and test this. I'm just looking for a volunteer, but look, <sighs> that's how cold it is today. I gotta close my garage door now. So I took the tracks off. I took the tracks off because we'll have to take them off to get it wherever we want to get it. I did end up experimenting over here. And I ended up just tapping the rim itself. I know I could just drill a hole and use a bolt, but I think this is the what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put these like every second one or something just to hold it to the rim to make sure this tire doesn't fall off. So we got Eric in here today behind the camera. He, uh, he's gonna come test it with us, so we've gotta get the tracks ready. I'm just putting some bolts in it, so worst case scenario that all these welds break, uh, the bolt should hold the track in. I did the two on the seam, and then uh, 
one like every three after that. Just kind of uh, drill through the rim here. Drill through the track. Jam a bolt through it. Man, it's so hard to get in the bag. <laughs> there we go tracks are on and we got this little tiny field here to play in so let's do some playing
Uh-oh, we got smoke. We blew an oil feed line. I seen oh. it. It was this one, right here. Oh yeah. Sad. I don't know if we have anything to tighten that with. Not even a crescent wrench or anything? I don't anything? think I brought any wrenches. But we're stuck again. Look, it's just all ice. So uh, we're, I don't want to say our test was unsuccessful, but like, what are you supposed to do when we're trying to drive on this? It's not going to work. You drive over here. That's what I was doing right there. And I thought we were catching grass on fire right here, but oh yeah, look, it's totally loose. I don't know how much oil we have now. Now. All this oil can't be good for the exhaust though. That's that's one good thing about not having a hood is that we noticed our oil leak right away. Because you can see it just pissing out everywhere. Filthy, dirty now. That's what the air filters did their job. I'd say mission success. We seen like three cops. And Dude, we nailed that. We we nailed it. I think. Um, obviously, the tracks didn't work out as we planned. We would have worked a lot better if we just had screws in the tires. But um, maybe when there's a bit more snow, we can retry it again. But good times. Good times. We did hood rat shit with our hood rat friends, just like this. <laughs> so peace easy and get that V